Uh, hello and welcome to this demonstration in the course for Secure Systems Engineering. Uh, in this demo, we'll be actually looking at uh, an example of how position independent code works. So in the previous demonstration, uh, we looked at uh, runtime uh, relocatable code and uh, we seen that it requires that the loader uh, have a lot of uh, thing to do and it uh, requires the loader to go and modify the code and fix the address in each of the locations and a lot of this becomes much more simplified uh, with uh, PIC or position independent code. So we will use exactly the same code as we have done in the previous uh, demonstration. Uh, this code can be downloaded uh, in the virtual machine that comes along with this course and uh, this particular example is in nptel underscore codes module pi reloc got. So, um, we use exactly the same library as before. Uh, the library is called mylib uh, c and uh, which is as shown over here. It has mylib underscore int, set mylib underscore int and get mylib underscore int are two set and get functions. And uh, the driver for this as before is here which has um, an invocation to set mylib underscore int and get mylib underscore int. In order to generate position independent code, uh, the uh, command or the compiler options are slightly different. So in order to do this, in this example, our make file would require make uh, lib underscore pick, which, which would generate the library as a position independent code library or a pick library. So as you see here, we have given an additional option minus f pick, which would generate uh, which would cause the compiler to generate a position independent code library. And as before, we also dump the uh, disassembly of this library in lib mylib underscore pick dot so dot dis. So the first thing you would notice uh, when we open this disassembly is that the code looks very different uh, compared to the uh, one we have seen previously that is with the uh, load time relocation. Okay, so let us um, so so what you see over here, and if we actually compare this with uh, the previous library code that we obtained, you see that uh, this and this are, com are completely different. So uh, we'll go into what exactly happens over here. Uh, now uh, the set my lib underscore int um, essentially would uh, take an input parameter x and set the global variable my lib underscore int with that particular value. So uh, this is done very differently uh, with pick code. So essentially these two instructions uh, creates the stack frame. The next instruction is a call to this function called underscore underscore x86 dot get underscore pc und underscore tunk dot ax. So essentially what this function does, uh, this function is something which the compiler adds in. Uh, this function just has two statements. It moves the stack pointer or the contents of the stack pointer into the ax register and then returns. So note that when uh, a call is done, the return address for this call that is corresponding to the address corresponding to this instruction uh, is pushed onto the stack and at that time the stack pointer is pointing to that return address. Therefore what is moved into the EAX register is the address of the following instruction that is this instruction. The reason why we do this is that we want to get the address of this particular instruction uh, and this instruction could be relocatable. So therefore we cannot uh, hard code the address but rather find an indirect way to actually get the address of this instruction. Next we add a value of 1a b8 to ex register. So this um, value 
gives the address of a table known as the got table. So, this is the got table. Therefore, at the end of this instruction, the address of the got table is moved into the EAX register. And then at an offset of minus 14 in the got table is where the uh, actual address of mylib underscore int is stored. So, this address is then moved into the EAX register and uh, the value of x present in the stack at a location uh, 8 bytes from the frame pointer is then moved into the EDX register, then x is stored into mylib underscore int. So, let us see GDB uh, working with this. So, we will open this and uh, run GDB. executable for the driver is dpick. So, we uh, can run dpick as it is. Oops, and as before, we need to export the LD library path. Okay. So, as expected, we would see mylib is 100 and the value of glob is 5555. So, let us see how this is working internally with the uh, GDB. So, GDB dot slash um, dpick. We put a breakpoint at set mylib underscore int and run the program and then we disassemble uh, the, the function. So, you see this, okay. So, there is a call uh, to this. Uh, get pc thunk dot ax. So, as we know what happens over here is the address of the next instruction that is this instruction gets uh, moved into the eax register right and uh, let us open gedit and just make note of it that the eax register uh, comprises of the next instruction. Uh, to this EAX register, we are adding uh, the offset of 1AB8, 1AB8. Uh, let us see what we get over here. Take the calculator. Uh, put it in hexadecimal mode. And uh, plus 1 a b 8. So, what we see is that we get an address of f 7 f d 3000. Address of our got table is f 7 f d 3000. So, we can just store it over here. And uh, we can also verify this uh, by looking at GDB and uh, we can see this by looking at the contents of the EAX register as follows, register EAX and we see that indeed it has F7, FD3000. Now within the GOT table at an offset of 0x minus 14 is where uh, we have the address of mylib underscore int present. So, let us subtract from this the value of 0x14 and we see this entry so um, f7 fd3000 
minus uh, 14 is this entry which is the entry in the got table which comprises contains the address of the variable mylib underscore int. So let us actually look at the contents of this location. So we can dump that memory location using the gdb command x slash x edit paste and uh, put a 0 x here and we see this uh, f7 So this address is the location of mylib underscore int. So we can check this by also printing the address of mylib underscore int uh, where you see that uh, it is identical. So essentially what is happening here is the got table stores the offset for each and every variable present in the program. Uh, this got table is fixed in the program space but the variables could move into any region in uh, the uh, program space. The loader will ensure that the contents of the got table will be appropriately modified so as to reflect the correct address of these variables. So we can actually uh, play a small trick over here. If we modify this particular location which contains uh, the address of uh, the global variable mylib underscore int, we can actually cause the program to behave spuriously. So let us see the driver.c and let us look at the address of this global variable glob. So that is done by p slash x glob and uh, we see that this has an address 804a024. Now what we can do is change the contents of the got table to point to glob. So this is done as follows. We can set int um, to be equal to ampersand glob. So what we have done over here is that the got entry for mylib underscore int now points to this global variable glob. We can check this like p slash x ok. So this is the address of uh, glob and now if we continue executing what you see is that we have got a invalid or malicious output. So the value of glob according to this program should have been 5555. But since we have modified the got table, therefore uh, glob actually has a value of 100. So in this way, even though uh, ASLR actually makes attacks uh, much more difficult, but still there are uh, potential flaws which an attacker could uh, use to manipulate the working of the program. Uh, it could actually change the behavior of the program and so on. Thank you.